You're about to witness an unforgettable encounter. Pat Hardison, a firefighter badly burned in the line of duty, endured the most extensive face transplant ever attempted. But his experimental surgery required a selfless act on the part of one remarkable mother. Over a year later, Nancy Millar is coming face to face with the man whose bravery led to this moment. Oh, okay. Lord. All right, take a deep breath. Just up those stairs is a man Nancy Millar has never met. What's going through your mind? <laughs> but his face, she already knows. But I try not to lose it. <laughs> it belongs to Pat Hardison, the recipient of a groundbreaking face transplant. There's no way to describe the thanks and the gratitude that I have. The donor, Nancy's son, David. Tonight, she's going to meet some of the people whose lives he saved and come face to face with Pat for the very first time. It's going to be emotional on both ends. No more tears. Happy tears, happy tears, happy tears. Let's go. All right. Now, I believe we have candles. It's been more than a year since Nancy lost her son, Dave Rodebaugh. Come on, Mom. You grab a couple of bouquets. We were really close. It was almost like we were twins. She raised him as a single mother, their tight bond forged while they traveled the country working together at craft fairs. He liked to create. He knew how to do just about everything. He had a uh, serious, serious thing for speed. Been riding a fixed gear for probably 10, 12 years. But it was his love of bicycles that brought him to New York, where he worked as a bike mechanic. I've been riding my whole life. It started out when I could walk. My parents bought me a little 12 inch Ninja Turtles Huffy bike. Started taking that off little wood jumps and busting my eyes open and breaking bones and I've been doing it since. There was no fear in that boy at all. The group he rode with becoming much more than friends. It's like a family outside of a family. Everyone looks out for everyone and it's a pretty tight knit group of people. Al Lopez was one of them. Dave was without a doubt like the best guy you never met. Flying through the air, defying gravity. That's David ripping around the track at a Red Bull sponsored race in 2014. Just kind of like you got to gas it, not think about it, and just go, go, go. Dave was never supposed to die. You couldn't ever think about stuff like that if you were the type of dude that did the type of stuff that Dave did. A year after winning that race, Dave suffered a head injury in a bike accident while riding home from work. He wasn't wearing a helmet. After clinging to life for more than three weeks, Nancy made the heartbreaking decision to let him go. But David would live on in the tiny mementos and the big memorials his friends set up and in the countless people whose lives were about to change. This was all meant to be somehow. I think he knew he was going to be giving. Dave had chosen to be an organ donor, and he was also a perfect match for an experimental surgery nearly 15 years in the making, an unprecedented procedure to give Pat Hardison a new face. The volunteer firefighter and father from Mississippi ran into a burning house searching for survivors when the roof collapsed. You know, daddy left one way, and then when I came back home, I was a totally different person. He was lucky to survive, but the fire robbed him of his scalp, ears, and nose. His eyelids and lips were also gone. I think the first time I realized like what he had gone through was the first time I saw him. Pat's oldest daughter, Allison, was just six at the time. And I remember going out to the house, and my mom and stepdad literally had to drag me in the house because I was scared. And while his devastated family and friends adjusted over time, Pat never could. He became withdrawn, depressed. Doctors told him he would ultimately go blind. Can you take off your ears for me for a second? Desperation led him to Dr. Eduardo Rodriguez at NYU's Langone Medical Center. The pioneering surgeon in the emerging field of face transplants had been looking for the perfect patient, and Pat was the one. The reality is, we can, we can make you much worse than you are now. And if this were not to work, we've actually made you worse yeah. than you were before. It'll so work. you completely understand this, right? Oh, yeah. Willing to risk his life. It's in God's hand, so it'll happen when he's ready for it to happen. The father of five well aware that his surgery would only be possible with another family's loss. 
I pray for them daily because I cannot imagine losing somebody at a young age and then having to be asked to, to give what they're asking to give. It took two years to find the right donor, Nancy Millar's son, David. But because face transplants are still experimental, they first needed Nancy to agree. When the doctors asked me if I would donate his face, I said, of course. And of course, at the time, I was thinking just parts of his face. And they said, no, we mean the whole face. And they looked at me and they, I said, of course. I mean, no hesitation, it didn't matter. Just two days later, Pat is wheeled into surgery. It takes 12 hours to remove the donor's face. face is going to the other room now. Dr. Rodriguez disappears into Patrick's OR. It'll take him another 14 hours to complete this surgery. Back in the donor's room, another team of surgeons rushes in. There are other lives on the line. In operating rooms across the city, four other patients are being prepped for their own life-saving operations. Among those saved on this day, two young boys and a 58-year-old woman who had all been desperately waiting for transplants. Every day, 22 Americans die waiting for a life-saving transplant. Nationally, only 50% of eligible adults are even registered as organ donors. We have a crisis here. We call it a crisis in, in the U.S. Helen Irving runs Live On New York, the group that matches organ donors to patients in need. How many organs was David able to donate? So he donated the heart, liver, and kidneys. We also donated bone and skin and corneas. Those bone and tissue donations could have saved or improved the lives of up to 50 people, all from a single organ donor, Dave Rodebaugh. So it's been more than a year since you've been here. Yeah. It's been a tough year for Nancy. While she was grieving her son's death, she was also battling cancer. Now she's back in New York for the first time since he passed away. Do you feel him here? Yeah, yeah. I do. He's here, I feel him everywhere. <laughs> he used to walk up behind me and put those big ape arms around me and just, just sway back and forth. He said, I love you, Mommy. You were my life. You were my everything. He used to always just bend over and kiss me on the forehead. And so we'd reciprocate. As soon as he'd leave, that'd be the last thing I'd do. Tomorrow, Nancy is going to meet the people whose lives were saved by David's organs, including Pat. I just want to kiss his forehead. <laughs> <laughs> the next morning, a boisterous group of grateful families excitedly wait to meet Nancy. How do you tell somebody that you've never met, that you love them? You know, it's just, we just want to say thank you. One by one, they get that chance. Hi, my name's Nancy. I'm Nancy. Hi, Dad. What's your name? Nicholas. You are gorgeous. Look at you. Mm -hmm. Could I have a big hug? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I have to say thank you. I have to let you know how much your decision has changed our life. Do you uh, skateboard? Skate, skate, skate oh, yeah, rollerblade? You know I love you, and you don't even know me. Three families now intertwined with Nancy's. They told oh, me I wasn't going to get a heart. I wasn't going to give up. I said, it'll come for me. You made me something? Can I open it now? I would love to hear your heart. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> Press down. It's so strong. We would like to thank you once again for the wonderful gift you have given us. That you guys will forever be in our hearts. God bless you. <laughs> when we come back, we good? Pat Hardison's 15 month journey to say thank you. Hopefully, she's not going to regret her decision of doing this. And the moment Pat and Nancy come face to face. This is, in many ways, the big moment. <laughs> Pat's about to walk down the stairs. What's going through your mind? Let's go. All right when Nightline returns.